the tears of joy as our Lord Christ, our brother, says, Come closer to me. I am Jesus, whom you crucified, but I am alive again. God accomplished his purpose, and all who trust in Christ on that day will receive that pardon of forgiveness of sins and will come with him to live with him in his kingdom, just as Joseph would invite his family and his brothers. We will live with our Lord in his kingdom forever. God's gracious plan is to cause forgiveness to flow. This message is from Rock of Ages Lutheran Church in Payson, Arizona. Ancient Faith for Today's World, February 20th, 2022. Genesis 45. I'm standing today in the Shufly Indian ruins found in the Tantano National Forest. Here you can see some of the outline of the buildings that the archaeologists found as they searched this area about 40 years ago. But the civilization, they guess, was here about a thousand years ago and survived for around 300 years. All the buildings and the, the frames of the structures that were here give a reminder that people once dwelt here that we know very little about other than some of the traces of what was left behind. Some people suppose it might have been war, but most seem to think that it was a prolonged time of drought that drove them out of the area or decimated them. You know, that's almost what happened with the people of Israel. They were a small tribe and group, not much bigger than the people who lived here as they traveled about in the land, and they nearly all perished, except God had a plan. And God had a plan that he would preserve them and keep them alive so that the whole world would be blessed through them and you would be blessed. And that plan, today we see as we look at God's gracious plan revealed, centered around forgiveness. It was forgiveness that allowed the people of Israel to survive. It was forgiveness that allowed them to go on and the whole world to be blessed through them and you to be blessed. So today we continue our series looking at God's gracious plan revealed as we look at how he moves us to forgive and he makes forgiveness flow. What we're looking at in the book of Genesis is a small tribe. It was the 12 sons of Jacob who didn't amount to too much. And what happened was one of the stories of forgiveness that's one of the most astounding recorded on the pages of Scripture. Can you picture Joseph? He's one of the younger brothers, and all his older brothers can't stand him. You see, Joseph kind of rubbed it in their face sometimes about how he was blessed and how his father favored him probably didn't help. One day, Joseph even revealed a dream where his brothers would all be bowing down before him further irking on the envy, hatred, and jealousy of his brothers. Finally, when Joseph was about 17 years old, his brothers couldn't stand it anymore. And so they took Joseph when he was alone with them out in the fields, and they threw him into a cistern to leave him to die. Can you imagine how his brothers felt when it says years later they still remembered his pleas and his screams for help? They did have some pity. They spared his life as they saw a caravan approaching headed towards Egypt and they sold him off as a slave. Joseph made it to the land of Egypt, was living as a slave for 13 years. And as that time went by, Joseph, yes, was blessed by God, but he was also accused of wrong, falsely, and thrown into prison. And there Joseph was sitting in a foreign land a foreigner, an outsider. He had been rejected and hated by his brothers, left for dead, deserted and abandoned, sold as a slave, and then left to rot in jail. But God had a plan to turn all that around. Just as we saw last week, Joseph trusted that the Lord would bless all who trusted in him. And sure enough, for Joseph, that was true, as God lifted him up out of the prison 
And by God's working, Joseph was made to be the second in command of all of the land of Egypt to help the people during a time of great famine. I don't know how long the, the famine or whatever might have driven out the people here in the Shufli Indian ruins. But the one that was going to come upon the whole land of Egypt and all the surrounding nations was revealed to be seven years long. But Joseph was lifted up to collect grain and to preserve the people to survive during that famine. The Pharaoh had made him the one in charge of distributing all the grain, the one in charge of overseeing the blessing that would go on every nation around Egypt as they all came bowing before Joseph. And then two years into the famine, there they were, those people, those wanderers, those nomads who came before Joseph. I'm sure Joseph recognized the sound of their voices. Joseph understood their language, though they did not know it. As Joseph, who now looked like an Egyptian, stood before them, spoke the Egyptian language, was adorned with the signet ring of the Pharaoh, and on his seat, standing commanding over them, his brothers came bowing before him. They had already been here and gone through many ordeals with Joseph as Joseph tested them to see if his brothers still were jealous and envious of the youngest, their son, their brother, Benjamin. They passed that test. Now, Joseph couldn't hold it back any longer. There he was, the ruler of Egypt, the one to whom all nations were coming around looking for hope and for grain, Joseph's brothers bowed before him. Joseph couldn't contain himself. And then Joseph started to weep. He said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? Well, we see his brothers were so terrified by the fact that they were not just in the presence of a great ruler of Egypt, but it was their brother, the one they had left for dead, the one they sold off, the one they were willing to kill and reject. They were terrified being in the presence of Joseph. Joseph says, come closer to me, please. They came closer. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be upset or angry with yourselves for selling me to this place, since God has sent me ahead of you to preserve life. For two years now the famine has been in the land, and there are still five more years which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me ahead of you to preserve you as survivors on the earth, to keep you alive by a great act of deliverance. So, Joseph says, it was not I, it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a, a father to Pharaoh that is over him, serving him, Lord over his entire household, ruler over the house, and over the whole land of Egypt. You see, what, what kept Joseph all that time was knowing that God had a plan. God had a plan to rescue and restore. Though he was in great depths of despair, he trusted the Lord would deliver. And sure enough, Joseph recognized that's why he was in his position. Not to get revenge on his brothers, not to now have payback, but to carry out the Lord's plan. And the Lord's plan included forgiving his brothers and saving his brothers. Brothers and sisters, whenever you face hardships in your life, whenever you face attacks from others around you, know that God has a plan, and his plan involves moving you to forgive. Joseph gives us a picture of the great plan that God has to forgive this world. That despite all the trials, despite all the evil that is worked out, through forgiveness, God brings blessing. And God did this. Can you picture that man who came to this world, made like his brothers in every way? He took on human flesh. Yes, he was the, the favored son of his father, the, the only begotten, the son of God, Jesus. But he came to this world. And his brothers despised him. 
the people of Israel rejected him, handed him over for death, left him for nothing. But Jesus endured it all. He endured not just imprisonment and false accusations. He endured the curse. He endured facing what we deserved for our sins. And then when Jesus rose to his height of power, conquering the grave, coming out of the tomb, yes, the the disciples were terrified. And the crowds that heard that they had crucified the Lord of life were terrified. But he came to endure all those things for us. Jesus trusted in the Father's plan, and the Father's plan that was through his suffering, he would bring deliverance to this world, not stuck in a seven-year famine, but stuck in the pits and the slavery of death and sin and the curse of hell, so that we might be free, brothers and sisters. Our brother Jesus stood before us and said, Come closer to me. And he showed his disciples, I am Jesus who became your brother. And God did all of this. God planned my suffering. God planned and used the wicked rejection of this world and the people of Israel to accomplish his purpose. And his purpose is that through me, now being in this exalted position, I am your Savior. The house of Jacob was saved from the famine. They would have surely perished with five more years if they could not survive too. But God planned ahead. And God used the suffering of Joseph to bring deliverance. We would perish in this world under our sin and the curse. But God planned ahead. His gracious plan is that through his Son, we are forgiven. Though the Son of God should reject this world, should enact revenge on us for our rejection of him, he says, come to me and find forgiveness. And that's now how the plan of God continues. You see that this world, which is doomed to perish under sin, doomed to face death and hell, we are lifted up out of the pit of sin and the grave. We are lifted up out of slavery to sin. And we are lifted up to be with Jesus, raised and alive forever, forgiven. We are saved from our sin so that we are moved to forgive those around us. I don't know if you've ever faced what, what Joseph faced, the terrible rejection of a family member who hated you, or a friend or someone around you. I don't know if you've ever faced what Christ faced, the rejection of everyone around him, throwing him to be whipped, ridiculing and mocking him as he suffered on the cross. But God moves us to forgiveness because of his great forgiveness for us. He has a plan. His plan includes you sharing the forgiveness that you now have from him. And just as Joseph was lifted up out of the pit and the prison, we were lifted up out of our pitiful state so that we can now save others with forgiveness. When someone sins against you, when someone causes pain and great tears, for Joseph it was, I believe it was many years, 22 years or so, that he mourned the, the fact that his brothers hated him. Now reconciliation was possible and he forgave. Don't hold on to the sin. Don't hold on to the, the anger. Don't seek revenge. But having been lifted up out of your sin, let the forgiveness flow to others around you. Because God, in Christ, has graciously forgiven you. And so we see God's gracious plan revealed. He works, despite the evil of this world, despite our sins, to carry out his plan. And his plan is that through the pain, through the sorrow, he moves us to forgive as he has forgiven us. Well, the shoe fly ruins aren't deserted anymore. I had to interrupt my recording earlier as some people were coming by. And I wanted to close with this. Can you picture the one who is now over all nations, dispensing his blessing when he comes again? 
like Joseph's brothers, you can picture the whole world. First of all, the church bowing before him, but then the whole world, every nation, language, and tongue coming before the king. And can you picture the, the weeping that will take place, the tears of joy, as our Lord Christ, our brother, says, Come closer to me. I am Jesus, whom you crucified, but I am alive again. God accomplished his purpose, and all who trust in Christ on that day will receive that pardon of forgiveness of sins and will come with him to live with him in his kingdom, just as Joseph would invite his family and his brothers. We will live with our Lord in his kingdom forever. God's gracious plan is to cause forgiveness to flow,